Yes, ma'am. I am. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We're turning it over to you. Well, praise the Lord. Thank God for you, Elder Rise and Rose Ministry. I am grateful to God for another opportunity to minister the word of God to the people of God. I never take any engagement lightly, and I count it an honor and a privilege to be a spokesperson for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I honor you, woman of God, and the work that you do um, for, uh, for the kingdom. And I know God is going to continue to bless you and your ministry before the sacrifices that you make in order to host this event. And not only this one, I know you do many things throughout the course of the year. And so I do honor and thank God for you. And so my co-laborers in the gospel. I know you acknowledge each one of them, but I promise you, I was so blessed this entire week. I was so blessed by their ministries, by their unique anointings. Um, and I had taken away so much from them. I took my notes and um, um, I marinated on my takeaways. You know, of course, you already said, Elder Payne, I must work the work. And I promise you, we have to do the work of the kingdom. We're going to get into that tonight. Pastor Eileen, my dear sister, uh, she said, we have to prepare the people for the return of Christ. Um, and that's our MO, preparing the body of Christ and sinners alike for the return of Jesus Christ. And then Pastor Tyra, my dear sister, uh, when she said we have to get to a place and get along with God. That should be our lifestyle. We also need that reminder. Uh, no matter how busy our lives may be, we have to make sure we spend some time with God so that we can hear from God and God can hear from us. And then, of course, Apostle Tiffany last night, I just want to say to her, she, she as well as you, literally almost brought me to tears tonight with such kind words from you guys. You just never know how your life will impact others. And that's why the Bible says to let your life so shine before men that they I see your good works and glorify the Father, which is in heaven. And based upon your um, commentary, um, I do believe that my light is shining. And so she reminded us that we have to be consistent in our um, in kingdom authority. And so I do thank God for that. And then um, Lady Elder Tanithia, she blessed me on last night. And you know what she said? You know, you can just see olive oil sitting on the grocery shelf. But guess what? The anointing from God cannot be bought, right? It's uniquely given by God. And so I thank God for the anointing of all the women of God who shared on this week. And of course, I do want to thank all of those who have called in on tonight. It is Good Friday. And yes, there are many things that you could be doing, many streams you could be on, many calls you could be on. Um, but I thank God for those of you who are taking the time tonight um, to call in. Even those of you, my family, friends, co-workers, my prayer partners, um, just everyone who's um, thought enough of me to say I'm going to give Janelle a little of my time tonight. And so I do not take it lightly. And so I do want to thank God for you all on tonight. Just a quick word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word on tonight. Thank you for this uh, prayer call, this prayer line. Thank you for God, for um, your darling son, Jesus, who loved us so much. God, you sent him to die for us. And I just thank you for this wonderful opportunity to minister your word, Father God, that I may represent the kingdom of God in a way that will glorify you. It's not about me, God. It's all about you and that the people of God will be blessed because of the word of God. Amen. And so, you know, I, you know, I'm a type of person, I like to stick with the theme. And so I'm going to try to incorporate the theme uh, along with what God has given to me. And I do believe it's going to bless you on tonight. So the theme this week has been Thy Kingdom Come, um, taken from Luke 4. Um, and you can see it on the fly. If you got the fly, you see the information there. And I want to encourage you, if you've not yet read that passage of scripture, I would encourage you to go back tonight and read it and get some fresh revelation, some fresh downloads from God. And I promise promise you God will speak to you through his word. You know, so I won't dissect it all, but there is so much in that chapter. It opens with Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, being led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, it's amazing to me that this particular chapter opens up talking about temptation. And so I have to do a sidebar right here. I won't stay here, but I believe this is for somebody because somebody might right now might be facing some sort of temptation. One of the ways that the devil will try to tempt us is by planting seeds of doubt to make us second guess what we know to be true. He says to Jesus, if, that's the doubt right there being planted, if thou be the son of God, Jesus was and he is the son of God and he knew who he was. So he didn't bite the bait. 
He counseled the temptation with the word of God saying, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And if you know how to use the word accurately, the word can be a weapon of warfare. So that's one thing I want you to take away tonight. But not only that, the devil will also tempt you with a counterfeit of what God has promised you. He will always offer you an Ishmael when God promised you Isaac. And if you don't know about Ishmael and Isaac, why don't you go ahead and do a little Google search. Google University will help you out with that. He showed Jesus the kingdoms, with an S now, of the worlds. That was Ishmael. When in all actuality, he was on his way to reign as the king of the kingdom of God. Somebody said, that sounds like Isaac to me, right? Metaphorically, that is. In Jesus' first coming, he came as the Messiah to save the world. But in his second coming, he's returning to reign as our king in the kingdom of God. When you know your purpose, the devil can't trip you up. So after being filled with the Holy Ghost, Jesus secluded himself, sitting with himself and with God. How many of you all know sometimes you have to sit with yourself before you go and sit with God? You have to sit with yourself to get your mind right, to get your flesh under subjection through fasting, through praying, and through seeking God. So after this wilderness experience, Jesus returned to do the work of the kingdom. Jesus said at one point, my meat is to do the will of my father and to finish his work. You see, our problem today is so many of us are not finishers. Too many saints put their hand to the plow and look back. But I heard the Bible says any man who puts his hand to the plow and look back isn't fit for the kingdom of God. Right. So what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the rule of God. It's the authority and power of God. It's the realm where the king reigns over his kingdom and his people. The Bible says in Romans 14 and 17, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You know, my bishop, Bishop Paul Martin, taught us, taught us many years ago that righteousness is the right way of living according to God's standards. Let me say that again. Righteousness is the right way of living according to God's standards. Now, some of us, we think we got it right all the time. We do all things right. But I promise you, your righteousness, as the Bible says, are as filthy rags. You're not righteous until you line your righteousness up with the word of God. Now, if you want to make a conscious decision, it's when you make a conscious decision to live your life according to God's word without compromise. And it's the only way we'll have access to operate in the kingdom of God. Righteousness is always right. David said in Psalms, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seeds begging bread. So if you don't do it for yourself, at least do it for your seed. When we walk upright, we can operate in the fullness of his power without restraint. Matthew 6 and 33, which is one of my mother's, not my biological mother, my spiritual mother, but I'm sure my biological mother loved it as well. It was her favorite passage of scripture. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Psalm 84 and 11 says, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright. So if you're on a fence and straddling in your walk with God, God is saying to you tonight, I need you to walk upright. Amen. So in Luke 4, Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God. But in Mark 16, he commissions us to operate in it. And that's my text tonight. Mark 16, and I begin reading at verse 15 and a few of the following verses. And it says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believe not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. 
In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And verse 20 says, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. And tonight I want to use for a title, go forth and do the work. Go forth and do the work. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. I want to admonish you tonight. Don't be the ones seeking the signs, be the ones operating in them. Let me say that again. Don't be the one seeking the signs, be the one operating in them. We all know what Jesus said about sign seekers. He said it's an evil and adulterous generation that seek for a sign. He says, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Signs are for non-believers. As believers, we take God at his word. We don't need a sign, but we appreciate the signs. Signs are given to warn people, to execute judgment, and to deliver people from oppression. When we see signs following, we know we're operating in the kingdom of God. <laughs> and the kingdom of God is here. Luke 17 and 21 lets us know that the kingdom of God is in you. When the Pharisees asked Jesus, when the kingdom of God should come, he replied, it doesn't come with observation. The kingdom of God is within you. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 4 and 20, he says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. In the book of Acts, Luke quotes Jesus and said, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. I want you to know tonight that we are in the uttermost parts of the earth. So I ask you, what are you doing with the power? Let that marinate, self-evaluate. What are you doing with the power? So tonight I receive explicit instructions, I believe from the spirit of God to remind us of three things and then I'm gonna be out your way. Who we are in God Almighty, that's number one. The access we have, number two. And number three, the power we possess. On Sunday, Dr. Darius Daniel said, we don't always need new revelation. Sometimes we need old reminders. We're not ready for the new until we have mastered the old, right? So number one, let's deal with it. Who are we in God Almighty? I'm talking about the great I am that I am. Let that sink in for a moment. Who are we in God? God thought enough about us to send his only begotten son to die for us while we were yet in our sins that we may become a child of the most high God. Who are we in God? First of all, we are a new creation in Christ. And we need to be reminded of 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, which says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. I'm not who I used to be. The old version of me no longer exists. I might look the same, but I'm no longer the same. Actually, I don't even look the same because the Bible says we go from glory to glory. And when you experience the glory of God, there is a glow about you, right? Somebody can see the glory upon you. You shouldn't look the way you used to look, right? Nothing about us is the same or should be the same. Everything has to change. <laughs> Everything has to change. We have a new mind when we take on the mind of Christ. 
our perspectives and outlook on life change. We hear differently. We don't hear what our ears, we hear what our spirit, which is our sixth sense. Our confession changes. We speak life knowing that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Not only are we new creations in Christ, we are the seed of Abraham. Come on now. Galatians 3 and 29 says, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Then we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Romans 8, 16 and 17 says, the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. I don't know if this is blessing you like it's blessing me, but this is blessing me tonight. Because of who we are, children of the most high God, we are a king's kid. And the Bible says it's his pleasure to give us the kingdom. And that's in Luke 12 and 32. But to put it in context, in Colossians 1 and 21, this is going to bless you. We were once alienated in enemies because of our behavior. Our sin separated us from God. But when, when we believed on him, he gave us the right to become children of God and have been reconciled to God where we can cry out, Abba, Father, because we have been adopted into the kingdom of God. Who oh, that bless me. We have been grafted in. Romans 11 and 17 says, and you Gentiles who were branches from a wild olive tree have been grafted in. You know, if you're not a Jew, you are Gentile. So if you, unless you were Jew, you are a Gentile. So now you have received the blessing God has promised Abraham and his children. That is something to shout about. And because of that, we have access, which takes me to my second point. You know what? Oh, this is blessing me tonight. We have direct access to God Almighty. Can you believe that? You have direct access to God. There are some people we wish we had access to that we may never have. We can't pick up the phone and call them. We can't pop up at their house. We can't even get an appointment to see them in their office, but God grants us full access. One of my favorite passages of scripture is Jeremiah 33 and three, and it says, call, and this is God saying to us, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. That's kingdom access. Sometimes we don't recognize or appreciate the access that we have to God. We have access to God Almighty. I'm talking about El Shaddai. I'm talking about Elohim. I'm talking about Adonai. I'm talking about Yahweh. I'm talking about Jehovah. You have access to God. Why are you not taking advantage of your access? If I can just go back to our theme um, text in Luke 4, you don't have to turn it. I'm just going to go to it right quick, just for a moment. The religious leaders of the day didn't recognize the access they had. All they saw was Joseph's son. Not discerning, standing in their presence was the son of God. When Jesus initially showed up on the scene at the River Jordan, John the Baptist recognized him. <laughs> He shows up in the synagogue and the demons recognize him. But the ones who read all about him, the scholars who studied him and was awaiting his arrival, missed him because they were spiritually blind. You need to take the scales off your eyes. The only way we can operate in the kingdom of God, we must recognize the access we have. But to do so, it's imperative that you sharpen your discernment. We have to recognize God. Listen to this. Or we risk mixing the next move of God. Let me say that again. We have to recognize God or we risk missing the next move of God. And he will always, he will not always look like what you expect. I don't want you to be deceived, but I need you to discern. So we have to know who we are in God. 
the access we have, and finally, the power that we possess. Matthew 16 and 19 puts it this way. Jesus said, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you, sh you listen to me now, you shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Now, we all know that keys represents power and authority. In Luke 4, the religious leaders asked for what authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they came out. If you go back and read it, you will see when them demons recognized him in the synagogue, he, listen, he called them out. He rebuked them and told them to leave. And guess what? They left. Too many people in the body of Christ, you're supposed to have power. We can't even cast out demons. Let's go and recognize them. Some of us sleeping with the enemy. Come on now. When they asked this question, what authority and power he commanded the unclean spirit, I need you to say his own because he is the power. The, he is Jesus. He is God. He is the second person in the Holy Trinity. Amen. And he's given us that same power, power to cast out devils, power to speak with new tongues, power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to unstop deaf ears, to open blinded eyes, power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. We have to walk in our God-given authority and power that comes through the power of the Holy Ghost. There was a question raised as I prepare to come to a close in Acts 19 that said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And the response came back, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. In order to operate in the kingdom of God, we need the power of the Holy Ghost. If Jesus needed it, we need it too. Luke 3 and 21 says, and it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open and the Holy Ghost descended like a dove upon him. Chapter four opens up saying, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Jesus was able to lead by example and do the work of the kingdom with signs following because he was full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> we need the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Apostle Tiffany quoted one of my favorite scriptures on Wednesday night when Jesus said in Luke 4 and 18, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. When you have the fullness of the Holy Ghost, you have the power power of God operating fully in you. It's time for us to operate in the work of the kingdom of God with miracles, signs, and wonders following. The Bible says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. It's time to go forth and preach everywhere because the Lord will be working with you, confirming his word with signs following. I'm so tired of a dead church. I'm so tired that we're not seeing miracles, signs, and wonders in many of the local churches. I'm so tired of people getting up there and preaching. Yes, about the marketplace and yes, about trying to build their churches. I'm talking about where are the signs? Where are the miracles? Where is the spirit of God moving? Yes, it's operating in many churches, but so many churches are lacking the move of the Holy Spirit. Again, it's time to go for it. Don't be the one seeking the sign. Be the one operating in them. Jesus promised us. He said, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. I'll never leave you or forsake you. He is not going to put you out there by yourself. He's going before you to prepare the way. He's going with you to anoint you, to empower you. And he's going to have your back because the Bible says he's our rear guards. Amen. We don't have to fear because the Bible says if God be for us, who can be against us? The devil in hell can't touch us without God's permission. He promised us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that, that rises up against us, we shall condemn it. 
You have to know that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So I challenge you tonight, people of God, go forth and do the work of the kingdom. And I pray that you have been blessed on tonight. We're back in your hands, Elder Rise. God bless you. Amen. My, my God, my God, my God. Come on, somebody just, just receive that on tonight. Muted. Receive that word on tonight. Oh my